Today, we're going to take a closer look at Intel Corporation, ticker INTC, and a lot of recent updates that have come out for the company, especially in their foundry side. Uh, I want to say this is pretty interesting, right? Today is Father's Day, so happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. This is actually my first Father's Day, so I'm super excited. At the moment, the little one is sleeping, so I'm trying to get this video in pretty quickly. Uh, and it's pretty interesting, right? Because Intel is definitely one of like the founding fathers of a lot of semiconductor solutions, so I think it both well um, as you guys all know Intel is not one in my position in my portfolio but it's one that I do kind of cover a lot in this channel I'm huge into the semiconductor market thanks to both career and education uh, so I'm pretty excited to kind of talk a little bit about Intel and the recent updates so let's get started all right so the first update came out on June 16th right now it's June 18th so on Friday and Intel plants an assembly and test facility in Poland uh, and this is pretty interesting right because Intel is definitely trying to expand their manufacturing side and an important side of manufacturing is obviously the assembly and test and we'll talk a little bit about that in a bit um, but Intel is is expected to invest up to $4.6 billion in Poland. Um, the new facility will help meet the demand for assembly and test capacity anticipated in coming years. So Intel today announced that it has selected an area near Rocklaw, I'm pretty sure I butchered that, Poland, as the site of a new cutting edge semiconductor assembly and test facility. This, this facility will help meet critical demand for assembly and test capacity that Intel anticipates by 2027. And this is not the first time the company is kind of expanding their, their European outreach, um, right? So Intel's planned investment in Poland combined with ex its existing wafer fabrication facility in Lexlip, Ireland, and its planned wafer fabrication facility in Germany will help create a first of its kind end-to-end -end leading edge semiconductor manufacturing value chain in Europe. So we can see um, Intel definitely has a lot of exposure here in, in Europe and they are kind of expanding. They mentioned they have already some form of wafer fabrication in Ireland. Now they're going to have uh, this kind of nice assembly and test here in, in Poland. And then they are also planning that other kind of fabrication plant in Germany. Uh, so overall, this will help out kind of Intel expand that kind of semiconductor manufacturing chain in Europe. So that's a great thing, right? Uh, so they do mention that Poland is already home to Intel operations and is well positioned to work with Intel sites in Germany and Ireland. And it's also very cost competitive with other manufacturing locations globally and offer a great talent base that we are excited to help grow. And that's what Intel CEO Pat Gelslinger mentioned. I'm actually pretty surprised that they do mention that Poland is very cost competitive with other manufacturing locations. So that's great to hear. They also mentioned that this new site is also well positioned to work well with Intel's leading edge wafer fabrication plant for Germany and its existing leading edge wafer fabrication site in Ireland. So overall, it definitely looks like a great move for Intel, especially as they continue to move into this manufacturing side. Um, they do mention that uh, they kind of break down a lot of what these sites do. Maybe some of the uh, some of the viewers might not be too familiar with a, fab a fabrication facility, with assembly and test facilities, so they do kind of break it down. Um, wafer fabrication facilities, also known as fabs, create chips on a silicon wafer through various advanced chemicals, mechanical, and optical processes. Assembly and test facilities, such as the one plant near Poland, receives complete wafers from fabs. They cut them into individual chips, assemble assemble them into the final products, and then test them for performance and quality. The finished chips are then shipped to the customers. In addition to complete wafers, the facility will also be able to accept individual chips and assemble them into final products. The facility will be able to accept wafers from chips from Intel, Intel's foundry services, or other foundries. And this is very important, especially since right now we're talking a lot about kind of this chiplet design where certain chips now uh, come with multiple different packaging. Maybe TSMC might make a chip, maybe Intel might make a chip, Maybe Samsung might make a chip. So Intel's creating this assembly and test plant where, hey, whatever you need, if you want to create chips with with different pack with different kind of chipset from different foundries, you can still come to us and we'll be able to put this chip together. So it's pretty interesting. I'm definitely excited to see this. Like I mentioned, I'm not a shareholder of Intel. 
I don't think I'm planning on, I, I don't know, every day it changes sometimes. I, I'm right in the middle. Sometimes I'm very bearish on the stock. Sometimes I'm very, very bullish. We can see the stock price right now, year to date, is up 36%. Unlike some of the other peers, AMD is up over nearly 100% and NVIDIA is up over 200%. So we can see definitely different leagues. I want to say with Intel, one of my biggest fears is this foundry and expansion, right? They're, they're really expanding out of this foundry business. But, you, you know, at first I thought this was a very kind of risky situation, but Intel, obviously, since they manufacture their own chips and they have kind of their own nodes, I, I, I think now this is a very smart move. And the more I think about it, the more I like it, uh, because Intel, obviously, they are creating their own nodes to kind of create their own chips. Uh, they have the tw uh, 20A, 18A, and they're kind of designing all these nodes for internal chips, right? Intel wants to make the best chips and they want to create their own manufacturing. So in the process, while they kind of create their own manufacturing process, why not kind of create a huge manufacturing plant as well to kind of get external customers and at the meantime while they do that also get funding from a lot of other governments like the United States like Germany and all around the world so I, I actually believe this is now a really great move I used to kind of see a little bit more of the bearish due to all the risk that is coming for um, but I think this is actually very important that Intel is really moving into this kind of external foundry because even though they're moving into an external foundry for other customers this still helps them progress Progress within their own nodes that are going to help them continue to create their own chips at a kind of very competitive landscape. So I'm actually liking it a little bit more. Intel year to date is up 36%. Um, again, the company is seeing a lot of kind of headwinds in its consumer space. Uh, but if things go in the right direction, I can definitely see Intel kind of being a nice performer in the long term of things. But I think right now, um, it, there's still so many moving rocks that it can go in either direction. But I do believe believe that it does I, I can see why there are people bullish in this company at the same time I can definitely see why people are bearish in Intel as well kind of continuing here we can see that Intel is expected to get to get roughly 9.9 .9 billion euros in state subsidies for German facility that's the German facility that we talked about earlier here um, in the previous topic Intel is trying to expand a lot of their manufacturing uh, and they're getting like I mentioned a lot of help from a lot of different governments this is a very moving topic uh, there have been other reports that Intel's not getting the 9.9 .9 billion they're gonna get maybe close to 6 billion euros which was the original number. Uh, there's probably a lot of negotiation happening here, uh, but we can see how a lot of uh, Intel is getting subsidized to kind of become a manufacturing player. And at the same time, by them increasing their manufacturing investments and supplies is going to help them create even better chips amongst themselves. So it's more like a double whammy the more I think about it. Um, kind of continuing here with the kind of external manufacturing investments. This one came out out of the press today on June 18th that Intel to invest roughly $25 billion in new Israel plant. Um, so the U.S. chip giant Intel will spend $25 billion on a new plant in Israel, officials said Sunday. Um, the agreement in, in principle will see the semiconductor firm build the facility in Southern City that would open by 2027 and operate at least until 2035. Uh, so there are obviously some incentives for both the government and for Intel to kind of open up this plant. I, I want to say Intel has already been in Israel. And remember, the company did purchase Mobile Eye in 2017, I believe, which is also an Israeli in Israel Israel based technology company as well. So it's not going to be a new market, uh, but we can see Intel's expe is expecting to expand there and it, again, continue to increase that manufacturing facility. So I'm really liking that a lot. I think that's all I have for Intel in forms of manufacturing. Um, another report did come out on Thursday that Intel to develop innovative data center cooling tech sponsored by US Energy Department. So one thing that's happening right now, guys, is data centers are super, super expensive due to the amount of energy that they're using. Uh, and it matters because right now, approximately 2% of total U.S. electric consumption comes from data centers, and a lot of it is coming from the cooling side. So there are a lot of companies trying to come out with ways to kind of maybe keep these chips cooler and use less energy 
So right now, it does seem like this project is roughly a three-year agreement with $1.7 million. Nothing crazy, but it kind of just pushes Intel to continue to develop some form of innovative in their data center market, which might make them a lead player in of in their future data center products. So pretty interesting, nothing crazy. This is not something that would make me buy or sell the company, uh, but it just kind of showcased a little bit more in innovation. Uh, next, we kind of saw on June 8th, the IDC anal analysis um, mentioned that a new study predicts Intel's 2027 servable, serviceable addressable market at $500 billion. So IDC has issued a study providing a comprehensive look at the steps Intel is taking to reposition the company to provide solutions that supply larger, higher growth markets. The industry research firm analysis shows Intel has increased its serviceable addressable market by 45% since it began its business unit reorganization. IDC predicts Intel SAM to grow at 7.2% compounded annual growth rate to 2027 to reach $500 billion. So I, I definitely pretty interesting. Intel has kind of been removing a lot of their low growth segment. For example, they sold, all, sold off some of their memory business, their connected home business, their cellular modem business, and they're kind of focusing on growth opportunities like the foundry business, like the GPU market, the AI accelerator, and obviously their main CPU process as well. So the company has reorganized a nice amount so pretty interesting to see that as well again a lot of reasons to be bullish in intel at the same time i want to say there are definitely a lot of risk investing in intel at the moment right now so let me know guys on the uh before we go any further let me know in the comments below are you guys super excited about intel are you bullish are you bearish also, if you can help me out, especially for Father's Day, right? G give me a Father's Day bone. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Make sure to hit the thumbs up. Just give me a comment and help this video kind of spread out. I'm trying to hit 30,000 subs by the end of the year, and it would mean the world if you guys can help me there. If you want to learn more about the semiconductor market, I do have a membership program, and I do have a community on Twitter. Once you join the member, you'll get weekly videos, and you'll also get to join the community where we'll be able to discuss a lot. Just hit the join button up here. Um, and finally, I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. And check out fool.com slash Jose for the 10 best stocks to buy now. With that link, you get a promotional offer for the subscription service. Now, let's continue with today's episode. All right, so next we have another topic that came out on June 15th, and Intel kind of is focusing some research in quantum computing. So quantum computing, many say, is the future of a lot of solutions in the computer world, but we're still in early stages. And Intel's new chip to advance silicon spin Quibit research for quantum computing. So Intel makes a new quantum chip available to universities and federal research labs to grow the quantum computing research compu uh, community. Today, Intel announced the release of its newest quantum research chips, Tunnel Falls, a 12 qubit silicon chip, and is making the chip available to quantum research community. Uh, so again, this is very small portion right it's only meant for the research community it's uh, but it kind of shows that intel is focusing in future innovation and that's what you like to see and especially if they're in the forefront of kind of maybe providing some form of hardware solution for this market it's going to allow maybe the future of the market to focus more on intel than maybe other players the, the, reason they, the reason this matters is currently academic institutions don't have high volume manufacturing equipment like Intel. So with Tunnel Falls, research can immediately begin working on experiments and research instead of trying to fabricate their own devices. So it definitely kind of takes off a huge hurdle in quantum computing and the future research there. Um, they do talk that Tunnel, Funnels, Tunnel Falls is Intel's first silicon spin quibit device released to the research community. Uh, and they also talked that it was kind of created due to Intel's foundry business. So again, this can also be, I think this is a double whammy. One, it kind of allows Intel to be a, a, nice, a nice leader in the research of maybe quantum computing. But the second double whammy here is that it also kind of showcases Intel's kind of foundry and manufacturing side. So it kind of creates 
a positive kind of press release for their factoring for the manufacturing side and all kind of the processing techniques that they have done to kind of create this chip. Uh, they do mention that the Tunnel Falls 12 Quipit devices has a 96% yield rate across the wafers. I think that's pretty interesting. And they do mention what's next. Intel will continuously work to improve the performance of Tunnel Falls and integrate it into its full quantum stack with its with the Intel Quantum Software Development Kit. Uh, so they do already have a SDK for Intel Quantum Solutions. So again, we're seeing a lot of semiconductors focus on this. I know NVIDIA is doing that. Personally, I don't know if Advanced Micro Devices is kind of focusing in quantum spacing right now. If you do know, let me know in the comments below. I'll definitely do some research. But it kind of helps, again, make sure Intel continues to be a forefront here. Intel is already developing its next generation quantum chip based on Tunnel Falls and is expected to be released in 2024. And they continue to partner with additional research institutions globally to build the quantum ecosystem. So this helps with many ways, right? They're going to be able to create the hardware for this future products that I don't know how long it's going to take, but they're also going to make sure to be in the forefront in the software side by making sure to partner up with a lot of institutions and kind of other research facilities in this space. So it's a great move. It's more of a great strategic growth where it can definitely have some strong results in the future. But again, it's not something that would make me want to buy or sell the stock right now. It's more of like, hey, plant a seed. This seed could either be a dud or it can grow to be a nice money tree in the future. Next, we have another interesting one. Intel and Ericsson Power first cloud ran call on HPE servers. So this is pretty interesting. It, it, it seems pretty boring. It came out on June 13th, right? And you might be like, Jose, what the heck is this? It's kind of talking about telecommunication and networks, but I really don't understand what's happening. So I actually created a pretty cool, a quick slide. And Ericsson, Intel, and HPE are working together to kind of create a new way for mobile networks to run more efficiently. And they're taking the parts of the network that used to require a specific hardware, which was that radio access network or RAN, um, which connects your phone to the mobile network, and they're figuring out how to run it on the general purpose servers. They're using Intel Sapphire Rapids instead, and like I mentioned, using Intel's latest processor. And this is like being able to run like your video game that is used to that used to require a specific gaming console, and now you can kind of run it on your regular computer or on the cloud. Uh, so in essence, in essence, this is important step towards creating mobile networks that are faster, more flexible, more efficiently, and potentially cheaper and more innovative. So it's pretty interesting. Again, it's it's just showcasing how maybe running some hardware products can now be run in the cloud instead and can overall, just like any form of digitalization that we're seeing right now, it helps kind of reduce the expenses and maybe trickle down to customers, but definitely help improve margins in the long term of things. So pretty interesting news there. So uh, I, I think that's all I have for Intel right now. I, Intel stock is sitting at $36.37. Again, I'm not one in my, I don't have Intel in my portfolio. I'm not completely bearish or bullish on the stock. I definitely see a lot of the greatness, especially with the foundry side. The more I think about it, the more excited I get about it. Overall, competition is always great. Um, and yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm still torn. Uh, I definitely enjoy a lot of other semiconductor companies right now and, and would purchase others before Intel. But like I mentioned earlier on, I can definitely see why a lot of investors are both bearish and bullish on this company. Uh, and this is one that I believe can be really, really torn because it can go either direction really easily. It can either be a very bullish company if that foundry side goes very very well and very strong, or it can go very, very bearish if they spend all this money in the foundry side and unfortunately it doesn't pay off for them. Um, so definitely interesting to see. I want to see continue to follow this company. Take care. Hope you guys enjoy the episode. Again, happy Father's Day and see you all next time.